All right, welcome back to our Guild Wars 1 playthrough in Nightfall. We're with our Dervish, level 10 now. Uh, and we are continuing on our primary quest, Isle of the Dead. And if I remember correctly, if we get to the next area, I think this is Isle of the Dead, maybe? Or down here? I, anyway, I think I think we're about to open up Nightfall a little bit more. We're going to get a party size of 8, if I remember. Uh, and then we're going to hopefully get to our final mission of Istan today. Oh so yeah, pretty exciting. I changed my build up a little bit. I was, I kept looking at the sand shard skill and it looks like it could do a lot of damage actually. So I, yeah, I spread my attributes quite a bit. I put down beast mastery to one. And remember, we're only level 10, so my attributes are going to be pretty low generally. Uh, well, hopefully, hopefully we can get some high numbers for this uh, stage of the game. I still have my pet flamingo. No name recommendations. Um, I thought about calling him Flamey. Flame, Flame the flamingo might be good. Um, yeah, I just I'm I'm kind of blanking on some flamingo names. So any flamingo uh, fans? In the chat i can't think of any like famous flamingo characters or cartoons anyway hit me up with a with a flamingo recommendation we brought him anyway he's only level five we'll just level him up a little bit yeah i'm interested in the sand shards let's try it out we got scale bounty so we're about to ruin some scales day right now and I have quite a lot of healing with Intimidating Aura and Twin Moon Street Sweep and Vital Boon. Like, we do tons. That That's quite a lot of damage. Wow. And it's spammable, I guess. Oh, it's 10, 10 second cooldown. That's not horrible. Yeah, so... If I cast Sand Shards... And then Holy Flame Aura, and then Pious Assault. That's a, that's quite a lot of damage, especially if they're grouped up. Oh, do I not go here? N Narashi Squad. Oh, I gotta go up there. I was ready to just head straight down here, so I need to turn left. Let's go ahead and talk to this Sun Spear Scouter. He's got a Harpy. No, kill all the scale. You've got your bounty. Oh, he just another another scale bounty. Darn. Okay. Thing I like about sand shards too is it's whoops. Nice. No, wait, what happened? The thing I like about sand shards is it's a it's a um, flash enchantment, but I timed it wrong there. There, that's what we want. We want to cover our enchantments with this heart of holy flame. But like certain, certain. Certain enchantments of the dervish, uh, they kind of want to be ripped, stripped, torn down, whatever verb you want to use there. Uh, but these two, Intimidating Aura, Sand Shards, I actually do not want those stripped. I want those on. Uh, but Heart of Holy Flame and Vital Boon, those can be stripped. They have good effects if they are stripped. Yeah, that's good. That's good damage. Eventually, as we get Earth Prayers up more, uh, that's going to do more... Oh, it's going to give me extra times that I get that uh, rock. So it's only two times after two strikes. But remember, the Dervish is AoE. AoE damage. The problem with it is it seems to only be useful in mo against multiple enemies because it's all other adjacent foes. But one on one battles, it's not the best, not the best skill to bring, I think. Generally, I'm feeling the most damage from this combo, the Art of Holy Flame and Highest Assault combo. Very spammable. 
A lot of burning up time plus the bonus damage. It's pretty nice. Um, I'm going the wrong way. It looks like I can go up that route though. Oh, I'm not going the most optimal route. I really should have just gone over here and down. Was well, not paying attention. It's gonna cost us. It's gonna cost us a lot of time. Okay. Generally, I do want to try and get some levels, and I'm getting a little bit of bounty here for my Sun Spear, so. I do not want to be under leveled too much. Yeah, the, the burst damage of Dervish is pretty impressive, honestly. It's not going to be able to be put out the same numbers of uh, damage that a uh, assassin would do, especially one on one. But I would say against groups of enemies that are close together, I bet it's one of the highest damage in classes. Especially at this level, like putting out hundreds of damage. Like I'm, I'm doing a, I'm doing at least 100 DP, uh, 100 damage, uh, on these. With these skills, uh, going off all at once, at level 10, that's pretty crazy. Imagine if they, like, if they were to open up, Dervish, like all the ex uh, expansion. Professions, in all of the campaigns. Oh, they're under attack right now. Get in there, Koss. There you go. If they were to open up and allow you to, like, start prophecies with a dervish or something, I think... I'm pretty sure dervish would absolutely clean up prophecies. Like, it would be ultra easy mode. That would be an interesting playthrough. Like... Start a nightfall... Uh, how would that work? Because you can't unlock... You can't unlock Dervish skills in Prophecies, can you? Hmm. Hunt down the undead escape. Okay, yeah, now we gotta go down there. But, in the in the city, I brought some Istani keys. I'm gonna have to think about that. I thought that would be an interesting playthrough, but at the same time, you wouldn't be able to get skills from the from the campaign that you came from if you started, like assassin or ritualist and immediately rushed to prophecies so it might not be that fun but just just like just to look at the the power gap between the campaigns there'd be a way to do it how would you do that um create a new character in factions or can or uh prophecies you get your skill bar using all faction skills or, or sorry, factions or nightfall. All your skills in either factions or nightfall. And then you go to prophecies with, like you, you would not be allowed to use skills from that campaign. That would be an interesting playthrough. I'm just ranting here. This doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry. But I do remember when the campaigns came out, and you switch back to prophecies with some of these like faction skills. It just made it feel like a joke in some situations. Which is natural because, you know, in order to make new skills, they have to. By default, they're going to be more powerful because they're exploring new functions new synergies new uh capabilities are gonna come up it makes sense it's gonna naturally be way more powerful just by having more options what do you think i mean now obviously mesmer is the most is considered the most powerful profession but before the reworking of mesmer and elementalist what was the most like overpowered profession? I feel like I feel like generally Guild Wars was pretty balanced, at least for PvE. PvP might be another story. Uh okay, so we're here. Look at that. We got eight party members now. 
Um, I still only have three heroes. I think we pill. I think we pick up Talcora here. So yeah, be careful. You're not just gonna run into the next area. I need to get some henchmen here. Let's get a another monk because it's party of eight. And I want to get. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give the Paragon another shot. And let's go like full martial classes, Dervish Brawler. Yeah, we're just gonna. We're just gonna rush in and try and get as much bonus from Sogolon. I don't know what skills is he's using though. But being level 12 now, he should have a full skill bar, I imagine. I'm gonna try and keep my eye on what skills he's using. See what he's doing. See what he's up to. This is a massive power uh or difficulty increase. They're level 15, we're only level 10. So I, I hadn't been doing enough quests, I guess, but hopefully we make up that. Hopefully we make up these levels here. Yikes. Okay. We're doing good. Flamingo's level six now. Being a dervish, this Heart of Holy Flame is gonna be doing a lot of our damage. Do I have any more um Holy damage. Uh, well, oh, 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 I know what we can do. Let's go back to Beckner Harbor. Har Harbor. I've got an idea. I'm gonna give Dunquoro. Since we got two healers now, I'm gonna I'm gonna split Dunquoro into smiting. Give him some holy damage. To buff us with. Uh, so he's gonna add some smiting. Let's drop one of the healings. There we go. Yep, not great. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, so we're going to go look at his smiting skills. I want him to put... Judge's Insight. That's a great one. And then we're going to put Bane Signet. Castigation signet on instead of remove hex. We'll be able to do some more holy damage, gain some energy, and then he's got signet of devotion here to gain some energy. Then why not? Why don't we give him strength of honor? Would that be good? Hell, it's fire. No, that's not good. Signet of Rage might be good. Let's do... Let's do Strength of Honor. But then he would only have... These three healing skills. Four healing skills. But the, remember, Divine Favor... Does heal a little bit. Okay. Try this. Uh, let's do it. <laughs> I don't care. Let's just try it. We're just experimenting here. So what I want to do when I use divine favor or strength of honor rather is I want to oh I want to um when I get out to the explorable area, I want to cancel no. Alright. Yeah. See he immediately cancels it. How do I shift click and disable? I want to disable it so I don't want him to ever if, if you disable it, he won't cancel it like he just did. And then I want to click on myself. And then click Strength of Honor. And now he's going to maintain Strength of Honor on me at all times. And since I disabled it, he will never... He will never um, dismiss it. He'll never dismiss that enchantment. The problem is I need to keep an eye on it. Because if it gets disenchanted, I'm going to have to manually put it on myself again. I'm going to put up their skill bars again so you can get an idea of what they're using. Let's go. Oh, let me get the bounty again. Let's 
scale, though. We want to be... Maybe I'm not fighting that many undead. Is it? Are these undead just for this quest? I thought this area always has undead. I might be wrong. Watch this damage. Boosh. Okay, not that great. There, yeah, that is pretty good. Those are just auto attacks doing like 60 DPS. Hoss just got deleted. Alright. I want to I want to pick my battles. So I'm gonna be going after scale because I have the bounty. These are a little weaker, they're level 13. Still, even though they're not undead, that extra 13 damage per every attack is really strong on the dervish, I think. Yeah, look at that damage. Dunkoro putting out some DPS. That's the problem I didn't like with Monk, though, is you cat if he he's casting that spell, like if I were a Monk Smiter and I cast these buffing spells on my teammates, I don't get to see those numbers. So it's, you're not really sure exactly how much of an impact you're having. And then if the player is not familiar with it, like I might think that I'm that strong, but no. You should be grateful of your local monk buffing you up like this. Because remember, we're only level 10, and these guys are level 13, 14, 15 even. And we're putting out some crazy numbers. Dang, you got ice spikes on me. There we go. Nice one. Flamingo holding his own. There's another Sunspear Scout up here. Perfect. Looks like we're going to have to fight some of these guys. Bill's a pretty good DPS. I'm happy about that. He shouldn't... Dunkoro shouldn't have any energy problems because he's got those two signets and one of his signets gives him five energy if, they're, if the enemy is attacking, so... He should have... And then these are really low energy spells, so he should be spamming, like, everything. Hopefully he's using Judge's Insight. I haven't been paying attention. Has he been using that? Let's keep an eye. Let's see if Judge's Insight pops up. Also, I need to check. Oh, he's not really using it. There, he used it. He put it on Koss. That's not bad. I mean, I already do Holy Damage anyway because of Heart of Holy Flame. How's Sogolon doing? No skills yet. Not using anything. Absolutely zero impact on the fight. He's just throwing spears, auto attacking probably. Okay, he used a Spear of Lightning, Aria of Restoration, and Signet of Synergy. So he's kind of a healer support too. So that's good. That's a good move to go Dunkoro as smiting because the motivation and monk henchmen they do some healing. I mean obviously the monk does but Paragon also does some healing it looks like. So it seems like it seems like um, in Nightfall you could already tell that the game, the developers were wanting to shift more towards these hybrid style of play, uh, playing styles, where your capable your character is capable of putting out good damage, but also not not quite, not quite one hundred percent like uh, DPS roles, but also having some self self healing, party healing, support skills. 
I was talking to some people and that was their that was the big complaint that they had with Guild Wars is they actually preferred having these traditional classes like DPS, tank, healer, uh, the Trinity or whatever. The developers of Guild Wars kind of didn't like that from even early on in Guild Wars 1. Obviously in Guild Wars 2 they that was their whole thing. They wanted to get away from the Trinity. The healer tank DPS, but you really start to see it here in Nightfall, I think. They're like, no, we want we want our players to fulfill be able to fulfill fulfill multiple roles. Which, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think about that mindset? Do you think it's cool to have players be more versatile with their classes and fulfill multiple different roles? I guess the complaint against that is then all the professions start to feel the same. But I'm not sure if I agree with that because, like, the Dervish feels very different than any other class in the whole game. And it's... It's the... Uh, Pretty versatile, it seems like. And as a healer, I like the option of being able to go smiting, even though it's not that great. You at least have the option of putting out some extra DPS. I think what they didn't like what the developers didn't like was um, players started to prefer very specific professions in their group. So if you picked the wrong profession, depending on the content you were trying to run, you were just kind of locked out of joining parties. Like, I don't know if you guys remember the old days, sitting in a sitting in an outpost, LFG, and you were playing a, a ranger or something. It's like, no one, no one's picking you up. Either you're a warrior or a monk. And if you're a warrior and there was another warrior in a party, like that was it. You're not you're not gonna get in. So there were these there were these um hierarchies of professions back in the day. And I, I'm kind of nostalgic for those, actually. Sitting in sitting in Outpost, and, like, you actually need a player's help. So you're sitting there spamming LFG, LFG. <laughs> Look at that damage. Heck yeah. The other thing that's interesting, this Vigorous Spirit, each time... Target ally attacks. I wonder if that counts as um like is that a really good skill to put on a dervish because I do those AoE strikes? I'm always confused I'm always confused by that. Like I, I think a strike and attack are a little bit different in this game. Like an attack is a swing of the weapon, and then a strike is the enemy actually taking damage from that attack if i'm correct so this the fact that the vigorous spirit specifies attacks i don't know because as we saw with empathy if an enemy used cyclone axe he takes empathy damage for each enemy that that cyclone axe strikes so yeah it's a little confusing the terminology and everything. The reason why I'm salvaging those uh, specific items I just salvaged, the bones and the, the scale, the claw, is because you get bones from it. And bones sell for quite a lot to the material. That's why I have almost two platinum. been selling a lot of my materials did we finish the quest you have three of three groups remaining but okay it's in the next area 
There's no point talking to that scout. This quest gives oh, only a thousand experience. We should hit level 11 definitely just from fighting enemies though. Okay. There's a person to talk to. Ooh, I remember this area. Actually, there's a chest. Let's pick these up. Get some extra experience. Yeah, these are relatively easy. Um, there's a chest here. In Nightfall, they introduced these either daily or weekly chests. I can't remember. And each chest drops gold and uh gold item and if you're following guild wars in 2024 he put out a series going through each of the chests in nightfall and i think the first chest if i remember correctly it's it's located in metani keys so yeah i highly recommend that series i'm gonna try and keep an eye on those videos myself so when I'm going through Nightfall, I make make an effort to pick them up whenever I can. It's pretty good money. Um, Mad Mandragores. Hate these guys. Remind me of Zerglings from StarCraft. They're always burrowing. Oh, we get a group of enemies. Oh, oh teammates, I mean. So in this one, we need to gather 20 shells. In this one, we need to chase down a Corsair. And then we have our primary quest. So let's do Lone Raider first, I guess. I should have brought a running skill or a crippling skill. I don't know if it's possible to fail this mission, though, because there's a sneaky Corsair. Because I think if he meets up with his Corsair friends, you just have to, you just have a difficult battle. I'm going to try and snake around here. Oh, he saw me. How did he see me? I'm gonna have to backtrack and get these shells. Dang it. <laughs> Why are they... What's going on with these guys? They aggroed, I guess. Alright, this is bad. We might have failed the, the quest already. Oh, I need to put Strength of Honor on myself. Here we go. The good thing about Strength of Honor being a monk spell is it cannot be ripped from my Dervish spells. Oh, he kind of waits for us. I'm going to come back for that shell. Oh, I can't. Stupid Mandragore. See, that's why I hate these guys. They're like Zerglings. Oh, man. I think they're only level 11. And they're grouped up, so we should be able to do plenty of damage. Milani drop. I'm dropping. Ooh, that was close. Dang. Stone flesh mandragores. They they take like zero damage. They have that obsidian flesh spell. Stone flesh aura. That's what it is. Well. Looks like we lost the Corsair, so we can just take our time now. I think we do. I think our our team does quite a lot of damage. I should have uh, I should have dropped the Brawler and. Dervish actually for the Mesmer and Elementalists just to try them out. I kind of like Sogolon actually. I kind of um, hated on him a little bit at first, but he's not bad. I can see his uh, healing doing pretty well. Looks like he made it back to his friends. Oh my gosh. Well, let's fight these guys. Is 
This is the perfect place to fight is a dervish. And these guys don't really move. The Corsairs don't really move. So if you can get them grouped up, they're just going to stand there. Eat all that damage. Hmm. Kind of wish that was a Corsair bounty. Ooh, that was some good damage. There's some the undead. So both of our missions kind of it looks like both of our quests ended up here. No, not the flamingo. Man, it takes them quite a long to level, up, long time to level up. Um, let's be careful here. Get in there. They're all grouped up. This is gonna be beautiful. Heck yeah! Get these guys out. Look at that, we're doing so much AoE damage that they it activated their uh fleeing code. Um, let's boost our earth magic more. Three times now, 30 damage each. Heck yeah. And we'll buff our Alright, so we failed. Dang, there's some undead here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna tell my teammates to get back. Oh, they're patrolling. They're gonna walk into us. They're both patrolling though. We can easily wipe here if we are not careful. Well our AP, our NPCs got wiped out. There we go. Now we can fight. I did not want to fight level 15 undead with the Corsairs there. Nice. Alright, now we can fight. Even though Rollon died. Quest failed. Dang. The undead. Alright, we don't need to fight those guys then. Too bad. Let's just gather the shells and do Isle of the Dead now. Yeah, I think the chest is over that way. Oh, there's a there's an Istani chest here. I got a key for that. This is a big area, actually. Let's fight these drakes first. One of them grouped up before I fight. There we go. Talking about. So if you don't if you don't position correctly, sand shards is actually a wasted spell. Brute sword. We got a new sword for cost. It looks like. Where's that at? Nice. A good one. Oh, it's not it's not a good one but what we can do starting in nightfall you can salvage this inscription and i should be able to put it on this no oh because that's the sword he came with darn oh we can put it on that one this short sword's better what it's not inscribable for some reason do I have any inscribable weapons? Maybe that one? Weird. I thought all the weapons were inscribable in Nightfall. I 
How many more shells do we need? Seems like there's tons of shells. Or we don't need to pick up every single one. I have to say, Strength of Honor was an excellent idea. I'm pretty positive there's a chest over here. It's either there or here. Actually, now that I think about it, I think it's over there. But there is a bounty, so that's good. And okay, we need to take out the stone flesh first. Just taking zero damage, that's crazy. This guy just melted Dunkoro. We have the wrong we have the wrong henchman for this. That stone flesh completely counters our whole party. I'm gonna hear about that and I'm gonna hear about that in the comments for sure. You idiot. Man, I could have sworn the chest was in the bottom corner here. Oh there it is. It's that shipwreck. On the other side of that ship is a chest and it's going to drop. I think it's a guaranteed gold weapon and uh, a certain amount of gold also. And if I, I think it's, I can't remember if it's account based or character based. I want to say it's character based actually. That doesn't seem right. Yeah, so I can't remember the times in it. It's either character base or account base, and it's either daily or weekly. <laughs> it doesn't help you guys at all. Uh, like, gee, thanks for the information. That really helps. Flamingo's level seven now. Ooh, the feathered feathered flat bow dropped. Where is that at? I think you get feathers from it. Oh, big surprise. Something called feather drops feathers. Nope, drops wood. What is this? Is that Jade? I think that's Jade, isn't it? From factions? Little, little uh, reference to factions here. I'm pretty sure that's cut out cubes of jade from Cantha. And these Corsairs are looting the shipwreck. This treasure chest, you guys ready? Dun, dun, dun. 515 gold and a glass staff. Not max though. Cool, really cool skin. Look at that. Look at that uh, skin for the staff. So I can identify that. Has a nice armor and energy upgrade. And you know what? I'm going to give that to Dunkoro. Because although it's although the damage is not going to help, he's going to get armor, energy, 15 energy and 5 armor from that. But look at the difference of it. He's got 43 with that. 
he gets 10 extra energy just for he having this staff and it matches his it totally matches his color scheme fashion wars look at that he looks like a boss now all right <laughs> we need we need seven more shells and then we need to find two more of these groups we need to go all the way back up there dang it This is a really good area to get some experience and sun spirit points. Because the the sun spirit scouts are everywhere. There's like a sun spirit scout on every island. They collect these bounties. I like the look of the Corsair shape uh ships. Very cool. I have to give it up to the developers for making really cool area. Both Alona and Factions feel... I mean, all three. All three continents. Tyria, Alona, Factions. They all feel very different. Each area. Need three more. Ah, oh, look at these guys. Stani cultist that's a new enemy let's group these send these guys back oh no we fought cultists before For some reason they get along really well with the drakes oh my gosh or the scales all right my flamingo aggroing them look at this damage boosh Douche. Blood back more up. Oh, this is a boss the drop oh my gosh i can see why players fall in love with the dervish now it's so addicting to see those explosions man that was crazy nice we got a uh, morale boost from that we needed that the poor don coro sitting at seven death penalty still or right, we need two more of these Not really any good weapon drops. I was hoping to find like a new scythe for Milani. And oh, that is a better scythe. Let's give her that. Dusk. Oh, that's the embossed scythe. Sweet looking. All right, we got all of the shells that we need. 20. Now let's find these undead. Gotta come back up here. I think there's a... I think it's here and then like over here but we already cleared we cleared the farthest one out already that's nice Finish this quest up. Who that? Who got that? Was that Milani? Yeah, she's a bit behind the other characters. I'm thinking Milani and I should be using like almost identical. Oh, she's got that chilling victory. She's got a nice build, and then she's got that imbue health too. A good little bonus healing skill. Oh, cast strength of honor on me, bro. 
There we go. Look at that. Just melted him. All right, one more. Yeah, I was right. He's on this island. Look at that. It's such cool scenery there. Let's get let's get a screenshot here. Okay, so it looks like we got to go up and then over this bridge and then the undead will be over there. That's the other thing I kind of like from this game compared to Guild Wars 2 is like don't get me wrong, I think Guild Wars 2 did a good job with the mounts. But the thing about it is you you move through the environment in Guild Wars 2 in such an unnatural, weird way. You're like sprinting over mountains. You're falling off of huge cliffs. You're, you're just like swimming underwater, swimming across. Like there's no, it feels like your character can go everywhere, which they don't like that is a bonus in many ways, but I also kind of like this way that Guild Wars 1 forces you on these paths. Because, I mean, this is the natural way humans traverse terrain is you walk over it. You're not you're not going to immediately be rock climbing over over sheer cliffs. And, like, the, the, the fastest route is the straightest route kind of thing. I kind of like the more realistic interaction with with the terrain. Versus the go anywhere, do anything. And, and Guild Wars 2 is not the only game that does that. Like, as I said before, like, people in when, when World of Warcraft came out. Nice. World of Warcraft came out around the same time you could jump. And many people were turned off to Guild Wars 1 simply because of the fact you couldn't jump. Like, I felt like that was so weird. Okay, I'm gonna sell that. 90 gold, that's good. Alright, last group. I don't understand. It, holy damage should be doing double against the undead, but I feel like it doesn't. I don't know. I mean, they are higher level, so maybe that's just it. Okay, we did it. We finished this mission. We can teleport back to Kamadan. Um, actually, we sh let's go to let's let's turn in this quest first. We're not gonna hit level twelve off this like I hoped, but we're getting pretty close. The next time I get the eight person party, I'm for sure bringing. Uh, some casters, elementalist and domination. Amazing, no one got hurt. Elder Soul is pretty upset. He says Cormier is responsible since she's been poking around the ruins of four. <laughs> You're going to blame Cormier for the undead? That's crazy. He nearly dragged her in front of the council to answer for it. You managed to get things under control quickly, so I'm sure everything will be all right. But the fun never stops around here. A ship from Kantha, of all places, just docked. It's rumored to be carrying servants of Balthasar, the Zaishen. Oh, we saw those people. Uh, Sosuk. We get we okay we get we get another hero here um all right let's do that i guess bad tide rising meet general yurukaro waiting at the sun docks i guess since we got Sos sosuke in the in my mesmer i'm gonna get the ranger in this one Talk to General Yurukaro. Yeah, I'm gonna get Alkalite Jin in this one, I think. I wish you can get armor that looks like that. It's so cool. Zaishin have trained and defended this world for aeons. I fear this may be our darkest hour. Zaishin is protected, blah blah blah, Tomb of Pride and Evils, blah blah blah. Just in time. Just in time for what? 
darkness you faced in far runner was a long forgotten evil deadly and ancient that malevolent knowledge now spreads can you not feel it the very air crackles prepare your party to fight the ruptures are upon us oh okay we're just fighting oh interesting We're just gonna we're just gonna do this right now. It looks like we got both of the acolytes helping us and we get level 20 henchmen. So this is this is more of a just a story progressing the story. Oh Ro just fell. Dang. You do need to act a little bit quickly in this, I guess. Looks like he took one down with him, though. Good job, Rogus. And I, I'm guessing holy damage does, or uh, does does holy work well against these servants of Abaddon as well? Narashi fell too. They're using some old school prophecies still. Nice size. Heck yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's awesome. Okay, uh, you've seen it before, have you not? It's already begun in Cantha Interior as well. If it has not, it most certainly will soon. We wish you, we wish you to accompany us as we follow other signs. You must see this through with your own eyes. Okay. In your travels, you find allies to aid us so much the better. So Cormier here at this time, I guess Cormier is going to Cantha. Is that what's going on? Yeah, this part gets confusing when they start melding the campaign timelines together. We should leave behind some of the Zaisha in order to defend Istan. Yeah, that's what's going on. So Cormier right now is going to Cantha to get the hero players from prophecies and factions. And we are left to get either Alkali Jin or Sosuke to progress the storyline here. I mean, we are first Sunspear now first spear we're almost commander we probably should be commander at this point honestly i should have stayed in the keys the milani matani keys to get that sun spear so it makes sense if we're if we're sun, supposed to be sun spear commander we would be left in charge of the sun spears at this point all right well all right, so we did a lot today. We bridged the gap from our... Uh, actually, let me complete this real quick. Go speak to Field Hyo. Or is it Jared Poopa before you deliver chair source? Okay, so we have this delivery. We're going to be getting some new... Uh, another hero next episode. And finally going to the final mission, which I think is over here. I believe so. And I think either, yeah, ne I think next episode will be the last episode of this uh, Istan Dervish series. And then the episode after next, we'll be back with our Mesmer. So if you've been missing, if you've been missing Rozier, the Mesmer, uh, carrying through with the main campaign of Nightfall, you're not alone. I miss him too. So <laughs> I have one more video to do, and then we'll bring him back and finish out nightfall and eye of the north it's going to be awesome 
uh hit the like and subscribe blah 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 see you later bye